Hello and welcome back to Coding with Unity. In the last video we set up item swapping and today we're going to be doing the beginning of our equipment system so we'll be able to drag items from our inventory and equip them to our character. You'll also be able to select what type of items can go into certain slots. So say you want to be able to dual wield, you'll be able to put a sword in your shield slot, but you won't be able to put a shield in your helmet slot or any of the slots that it doesn't belong, even if you don't want your shield in your main hand slot. You'll also be able to swap items on your equipment system screen too. And because of how the code is set up, you can swap items with the items in your inventory also. And I also updated it to where if you drag and drop an item on top of another inventory, it won't delete it. You have to drag and drop it off of an inventory screen for it to delete the item. Alright, so to get started with this, let's go back into the project where we left off in the last video. Now that we have the project open that we left off on, the first thing we need to do is to split our display inventory class into two different classes. The classes we're going to split it into are a static interface class and a dynamic interface class. And both of these classes are going to extend a user interface class, which will hold a lot of the necessary code for any type of interface. So let's go ahead and split this into three different scripts. Going back into our Unity 3D project, we can create a new script and we'll call it user interface and go ahead and open that script up. Then we're just going to copy and paste everything inside of display inventory into here rename display inventory to say user interface. Now let's go back into our project. We'll probably get a few errors. That's because we also copied over our mouse item class. Let's just go into our display inventory class and delete the other mouse item for now. Now let's create another class and call it dynamic interface. And let's create one more class and call it static interface. What these are is dynamic means that the interface can be changed and static means that we will be creating the interface in the editor and we just need to apply updates to that already created inventory. You can go ahead and open the static interface up also. So for example, with the difference between static and dynamic interfaces, our inventory, which can have different maximum item amounts, would be dynamic because we can set different maximum item amounts on different inventories and when we spawn it in, it'll spawn in as many inventory slots that we need based off what that inventory requires. But for our equipment screen, if we look back at the project that I was working on, you can see that we already have these one, two, three, four, five inventory slots pre-created on our equipment screen. So we just need to link that to some type of database that contains our equipment which will be also a scriptable object that is the same scriptable object as our inventory. I know that seems a little weird because it's called an inventory object, but if you think about it, it, the equipment screen is the same thing as an inventory screen. It's just a container of items, except that container of items is affecting what your character wears and the abilities or stats that your character has. So with that being said, let's go back into our scripts. And the first thing we're going to do is make the dynamic interface class just work correctly. And the first thing we're going to do is actually go back into our Unity project. And let's go ahead and create our equipment screen. So we're just going to duplicate the inventory screen. And then let's move it to the other side of the screen. Then go to your rec transform, put the anchor preset to the left side of the screen. And let's remove the display inventory script from our newly created equipment screen, which we can rename now, and our old inventory screen because we're going to be using our new classes that we just created. So let's go ahead and add a dynamic interface class to our inventory screen and a static interface class to our equipment screen. Now let's make both of these extend our user interface class. And what this is doing is it's going to be saying that this dynamic interface class can do anything that is on your user interface class. But we can also add more things to this class that the user interface class may not be able to do. And the same thing with static. So what are some things that we might not be able to do in a static class that we can do in a dynamic class? Well, I think the main difference is creating the actual slots of your inventory. In a dynamic class, they need to be created when the game starts. In a static class, they should all already be created and you just need to link things to them. So the first thing we're going to do is replace mono behavior with saying user interface on both of these classes. We can save that. 
And now both of these classes are user interface classes, but extensions of them. And now if we go to the user interface class, we're never going to use this class directly. We're always going to be using either a dynamic or a static interface. So let's change this to be called an abstract class. That means we can't add this user interface to any game objects within our scene. It can only be used to extend into other classes, which those classes will be added to your scene. And now since we want to make create slots different for dynamic and static interface, let's first copy this and copy and paste it into our dynamic interface class. Then go into here, we can erase everything that's inside of it, get rid of our brackets, put a semicolon on the end of it. We're going to change it from saying public void to public abstract void because everything that extends our user interface class is going to have a different variation of the create slot function. And now if we go back into here, you see we have a bunch of errors and that's because this create slots class, if we hover over it, it says it hides the inherited member. And what that means is we need to override the one in the base class, which is our user interface class. And now that we've overrided it, you'll see that that went away, but we still have some errors. If we hover over it, it says that it's inaccessible due to its protection level. If we go to our user interface, you'll see that we don't have anything on here declaring if it should be private or public. So that means it's default to private. So for now, let's add a public variable to it. You could also make it protected so it's only accessible to the classes that extend this class. So theoretically, it still is a private class because our player couldn't access the items displayed, only our dynamic and static interfaces could. But we'll make it public for now, we might change it later. And now that we've made it public, you'll see that that error went away, and the only errors left is this add event, which it's saying is inaccessible due to its protection level. So let's go down and find our add event function, and you'll see it's private. If we change it to protected, it should make it available to our extended classes like I said before, but it's still private to everything else. And that error went away, and the last thing we need to do is add in a using statement, which is using UnityEngine.EventSystem. And excellent, our create slots class for our dynamic interface is created, which it's exactly the same as what it was before, but that's because technically our display inventory class was our dynamic interface class, with a few differences. Let's get rid of our update and start from our dynamic class. And if we go back to our user interface class, You'll see that we have an x start, y start, the x space, number of columns, and y space, which technically this is only needed for a dynamic interface and not a static interface. We can control x all of these variables out of this class, go into our dynamic interface class, and paste them into here. That way when we use a dynamic interface we'll have these variables available to us, but when we use a static interface class we won't have them available to us because we shouldn't need them because we're creating that interface inside of the editor. So since we move those, we also need to move the get position function, but that's okay because we should only need it within this type of class. Go ahead and make this private too. We can also go ahead and move our inventory prefab to the dynamic interface because we can just pick which prefab we want when we're creating the interface for the static one. Now one other change we need to do is this public mouse item, mouse item. It can't be on our user interface class because it needs to be a single instance on any interface and not each interface's own mouse item. So we're actually going to take this off of here, which is going to give us a bunch of errors, but we'll fix them in a minute. Let's go into our scripts files and find our player class, and we're just going to put it on the player for now. I don't really like this and we're going to change it. I'm going to make some type of mouse config or a mouse data class or some type of config file or data file to store it later. But we're slowly developing the system and I think doing it like this is okay for now. It simplifies things and makes the video a few minutes shorter. So, Also, on that note, I'd like to know what people think. Would they prefer the videos to be shorter with less information and I'm just throwing the code at you and showing you how to do it? Or would you prefer it to be longer with me extending the explanations out? If I explain everything as detailed as I can, the videos could get pretty long. The last video, the item swapping video, was 40 minutes and I cut down on a lot of explanations because I was trying to make the video a little shorter. But if people would prefer to watch a longer video to hear the longer explanations, just let me know in the comments below. But Anyways, now that we have the mouse item moved to our player, 
when we go back to our user interface class we need to make a link to the player which this is another thing I'm not don't like that we could make the player an instance and just do player dot instance dot mouse item but I don't want to do that either so we're just gonna say public player player and now in our editor we'll have to drag and drop the player into each interface so everywhere where it says an error on your mouse item, just say player dot mouse item. And the only reason I don't like that you have to drag and drop it on every interface is that's just a point of error for you to make while developing the game. I think it's best to, if you can think of ways to code around human error, it's usually best to do. Which using an instance would fix that, but I don't like using instances because by the time you're done developing your game, you'll have like 50 instances and it's just it gets ridiculous so I like to I like to find other workarounds for that so I'll keep thinking about that but we're just gonna use this for now I'm probably gonna end up using a scriptable object to hold the data to be honest which still makes me have to drag and drop an object on but at least the object doesn't require the player to exist All right, now that we have the player dot added to all the mouse items, we shouldn't have any more errors in our user interface class. Now let's fix our static interface class. The only problem is it does not implement the inherited abstract member. So we'll just say public override create slots and we have our create slots for the static interface. We'll add the code for it later. Let's just make sure our dynamic interface or our inventory is still working. So now that it compiled, we don't have any errors. Let's look at our inventory script. And we need to fix these values because they reset because we're using a new script now. I'm just going to throw some values on because I don't remember what they were at all. So I'm going to copy them from my other project and hope they're about right. Let's drag our player into the player slot. Select the inventory that your player is using and the inventory prefab that the inventory is using. Let's click play and make sure our inventory still works. We got an error, but it's a unity error, so it's not our problem. Those values look decent. We should probably raise the Y start up a little bit because there's a huge gap right here, but I mean, it gives you room to put a name for your inventory if you wanted to do that. Let's pick up some items. Seems like everything is still working just as expected. We can still swap items around. Cool, everything still seems to be working with our new dynamic interface script. So now let's start working on our static interface. The first thing we're gonna do is set up the inventory slots for our equipment. So let's go to our inventory prefab, drag and drop it right here. And actually before we do that, let's rename this to slot prefab. That will, that's gonna make more sense. Now set it up how you want your inventory to look. You can just duplicate it and drag it around. That'll be my helmet. That'll be my... Ch I'm going to do the sword as the second one. The ordering for these is actually going to matter for how we're going to do the code, but it, you can do the order however you want. Just remember the order that you put these in is going to be the same as the order of the items inside your equipment database. All right, we have our five items set up. I'm gonna move these down a little bit because they're legs. I guess that makes sense, right? Now that we have that set up, we need to start setting up our static interface script. First, put your player in the player slot and set up the inventory that it's gonna be using, which will be our equipment. So we'll create a new inventory. We'll call it equipment, player equipment. I'm also thinking of a way to where you don't have to create scriptable objects for uh, your NPCs so they'll also be able to have inventories and equipment screens. And I'm pretty sure I know a way I'm going to do it, but uh, that'll be for a later video. Just putting it out there. Let's go ahead and change the size to 5. We'll need to do a little bit of programming changes to fix the uh, auto setting the inventory size to 28. But it's not much, it's not too hard to change this. All right, so go to your equipment screen, put your player equipment in that slot, and then we'll open our static interface script. So on here, if you remember what I said earlier about the order of your equipment slots mattering, that's because we're going to be creating an array on our static interface script that's going to hold the game objects that are going to be linked to the equipment slots inside the database. So we'll say public game object, and we'll call it slots. Then we can get rid of the start and the update. And inside of our create slots function, we'll say items displayed equals new dictionary. 
This just makes sure there's no current links between our equipment database and our equipment display. So after you do that, we'll make a for loop. And it's going to be if i is less than inventory.container.items.link i++, then we're going to say var obj is equal to slots i. This is just so we don't have to type slots i over and over again. obj is referencing slots i. Now we can use our add event function to add the events for all the pointer functionality to our linked game objects. So we can actually just go into our dynamic interface class and copy and paste this into our static interface class so we don't have to retype them all because they're all exactly the same. Now we need to add the using in. Then now that we've created a new dictionary of our items displayed for our equipment screen, we loot through all of the items inside of our equipment database and then we added an event to the object inside of our game objects array that is in the same order as the equipment database. And after we added the event to that object at the same spot that the database is at, we need to link the database with that object by saying items displayed dot add the object that we just added events to and the database slot that should be connected to that specific object. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, post in the comments and I'll try to explain it further. So I'm going to go over it one more time. We created a new dictionary of our items displayed, just confirming that we don't have an old dictionary or some weird creation in our dictionary. We're just erasing it and making a new one. Then we're looping through all of the equipment inside of our database, which is the scriptable object. And now we're creating an object that links to our array that will link to the actual game objects in our scene, the interface that we created in the editor. And we're going to take those inventory slot prefabs, I think we call them slot prefabs, we're going to take those slot prefabs that are in our array, link them to the same slot inside of the database, add pointer events to them, and then add them to the actual items displayed so they'll be linked. Okay. Excellent, let's move on. Let's go back into Unity 3D, let it compile, make sure we have no errors. The only error we got is a Unity error. You can confirm it's a Unity error, because if you, here I'll show you real quick. Say we have an error right here, we saved it out. We have this error, try to click clear and they won't go away. If it's a Unity error, it's gonna go away. Fix that, save, go back into my project. So now that we have this set up, let's open our slots array. Click this little lock button so when you click on something else it won't change your inspector window. Now we can select all of our slot prefabs and drag and drop them into our array. Click the lock again. Now let's click play to make sure we don't get any errors. We only got a unity error. Keep in mind the thing I said about clear only works outside of play mode. If you're in play mode and you get an error that's your fault and you click clear, it's going to clear. But we can clear away that unity error. Let's pick up items to make sure the inventory still works. We can swap items around. We can pick things up. Cool. We can even remove them still. Now let's just try and drag an item over to see what will happen. We get a key not found. The given key was not present in the dictionary. The reason that is, if we double click on it, we can't go to it because it's a dictionary error. But the reason that is is we're looking for the object inside of the item database that is linked to that specific interface. So when we try to drag an item from one interface to another interface, so from our inventory to our equipment screen, when we drop it in here, it's looking to see to make sure that item is in the equipment screen before it lets you drop it. And if it isn't, it throws that error. So instead of looking for the item that we're dragging inside of this inventory, we need to look for the item we're dragging in the inventory that it comes from, or the interface. And to do that, let's go back into our scripts. We'll go to our inventory slot class that we have on our inventory object class. And inside of here, we're going to create a public user interface that's going to link to the parent that this slot belongs to. So we'll just say public user interface parent. And now we just need to set the parent of the inventory slot when the inventory slot's created. So if we go into our user interface class, inside of start, let's make a for loop. Loop through all of the items inside of our inventory. Really, it's all of the items inside of our interface. We should probably rename that because it's confusing, but we'll leave it like this for now. Then we'll say inventory.container.itemsi. 
dot parent is equal to this. This just says when we start Unity and an interface is open, or when we open a new interface, the start function is going to run, and we're going to loop through all of the items inside of that interface's database, and we'll just link those items to this interface as its parent. So we can figure out which interface an inventory slot belongs to when we need to know that later on. So now that we did that, we can go back into our, or scroll down, we'll scroll down to the on drag end function. And for right now, the only thing we're going to change in it is instead of pulling the player's mouse items hover object, which is the object we're clicked on and dragging and about to drop, we're going to access it from the mouse hover slots parent. So let's say, let's line this out for now so we can look at it in case we need to. And what we're going to say is player.mouseItem.HoverItem. And this is the item or the slot that our mouse is currently hovering over. And now that we're accessing that, we can access the parent of it. And then we can use that parent object to find the database that we should be looking for the object in. So now we can actually just unline this and erase the original items displayed, and there we go. Let's see if we get an error when trying to drag an item into the other inventory now. Let's pick up some items. Let's just confirm we can still drag and swap items around. Now let's try to put an item in our equipment system. We got a whole bunch of errors. Object reference not set to the instance of an object. So a thing we forgot to set up is if we go to our player equipment scriptable object, our database needs to be set. We didn't have a database before. So now that we set our database, let's see what happens. You can see now that it's displaying the items that we put into our equipment system earlier. Let's try to drag it into our inventory. We can drag and drop items between our systems just fine now. Excellent. You can see it still deletes it when you miss. Let's pick up items and make sure it works still. Let's just put a sword in every slot. Cool, so we have the swapping working. We just need to specify what items can go in what slot now. And the way we're gonna do that is by going back to our inventory slot class and we need to add a, another variable. This is going to be an array and it's gonna be an array of item types. What this array is going to do is it's going to give us a list of allowed items that can go inside of this inventory slot. And we're going to set it up to where if we have zero items in the allowed items list, you can put any item in that slot. We'll just set the size to zero by default. So by default, any item is going to be allowed in the slot. And then if you go and edit the inventory slot, you can specify it. This would be more for static interfaces and not dynamics, but if you want to use it for dynamics, of course you can also. You'll just have to add a little code in. So now that we have the allowed item slot set up, let's go back into our user interface class. And inside of on drag end, we need to set up functions to make sure that the item can go into that slot. And then we need some more functionality to make sure if we're dropping the item on top of another item, that the item we're dropping it on can also go into the slot that the first item is being pulled from. So I think the first thing we're going to do is create a few variables just to make typing easier. We'll create a variable called item on mouse and call it player dot item on mouse or player dot mouse item. Then we'll say var mouse hover slot or hover item makes more sense for how we named it in this project. Variables are named a little different in my other projects so sometimes it makes it confusing. Mouse hover item is equal to item on mouse dot hover item. Var mouse hover object is equal to item on mouse dot hover ob. And then we'll do one more for the database. We'll say var get item object is equal to inventory dot database dot get item. So this links it to the dictionary that's on the interface. Now that we have these, we can make typing easier. So let's see what all we can replace now. So hover item. We can just make this say mouse hover item. And then player.mouse item can just say item on mouse. Same with here. And here. And here. This one is hover object actually, so we'll make it mouse hover object. So now that we have those made, we can type a little easier. And we need to do a few checks now. First, let's line out what removes the object if you don't drop it on the slot correctly. 
So the first thing we're going to do actually is go into the inventory slot class and inside of the inventory slot class let's make another function for checking if an item can actually go into that slot so we don't have to code that manually every time we need to make that check. So we'll say public void or public bool actually because we're going to return true or false can place in slot then we need to pass in the item object that we're checking for we'll call it underscore item we're going to first check if the allowed items length is less than or equal to zero and if it is we'll return because any item can go in that slot so we're just going to return true Then we'll also say now we're going to do a for loop and inside of this for loop we'll say if inti is equal to zero i is less than allowed items dot length i plus plus then we'll say if underscore item dot type is equal equal to allowed items i return true and if it never hits the return true throughout the entire for loop that means it's not in the allowed items array meaning that item is not allowed in that slot and will return false now we can go back into our user interface script and scroll down to on drag in then we can say if mouse hover item which is the slot that we're trying to drop an item in then we'll say can place in slot and the object that we're checking if we can place in that slot is get item object bracket and the item we're checking is items displayed obj then we'll say dot id because we need the id off of it so let's save that and let's go back into our project and let's see if that works oh another thing we need to do actually is we need to update our enumerator that holds the different item types. So we'll go into our inventory object, or what script was it in? It's in our item object script. So open up your item object script, and on our item type, we're instead of equipment, we're gonna have helmet, weapon, shield, and boots, and chest. So helmet, weapon, shield, boots, and chest. Save that off. Now we can go back into our editor. We'll just change this to say chest. Now let's go to our items and we need to set this up. So our shield needs to be a shield. Our swords are our swords. Or weapons. And we'll set up boots and chest and a helmet in a minute. Let's just make sure things are working first. So our helmet slot, let's go to our equipment prefab. Or our equipment scriptable object I mean and element zero is our helmet slot so our loud item size is one and it can fit a helmet our second one is our weapon make the size one and make it say weapon third one is shield fourth one is the chest piece and the fifth one is the boots And on our shield one, we actually want to equip, be able to equip the weapon also, so you can dual wield if you want. So let's click play and see if this is working. For, just delete ease. Oh, we removed the ability to delete. Of course we did. <laughs> let's erase the items off of those two slots. So make the ID negative one, negative one. Erase that. Zero. I guess an easier way, just make it say zero then five. Or let's reset it and now make it. The reason I clicked did the reset instead is because it needs to say negative one. Just makes it easier for typing. All right, everything's reset now. We're gonna add code to make that a little easier. That's what I was talking about earlier. We need to add code to fix how the uh, inventory sets its auto item size. So we picked up some different weapons and we picked up some shields. Let's try to put a weapon in the helmet slot. It didn't let us, it deleted it, and gave us an error. Bunch of errors. Our database reset itself again. I believe that's why we were getting the error. Alright, let's click play again after we reset our database. We already had a sword start inside of here, so let's just try to drag it into our inventory. That's working. It removed it from our equipment database correctly. So now let's try to click this sword and put it on our helmet slot. And it let us. Which the reason is, is because when we reset it, it reset the allowed items also. So let's go ahead and fix that now. And the way we're going to fix that is by going into 
our inventory object class and instead of saying new inventory we're going to create a new function and container called clear so let's go into our inventory and let's make a public void clear and we're inside of here let's do a for loop through all of the items so we'll say items dot length then we'll say items i dot update slot negative one new item and we're going to make a change to the item also and zero so new items not working so let's make that work by finding our item class so you can right click go to definition we're inside the item class now and the reason it's not working is because we only have a constructor that requires an item object so let's just make a new constructor called public item and inside of here it's just going to say name is equal to nothing and id is equal to negative one so this just means if we run this constructor it automatically gives us a blank item instead of a null item so let's go back into our inventory object you'll see we don't get an error there anymore let's save this and instead of container new inventory say container dot clear now let's go back into our editor now let's set up our allowed items one more time so first one is a helmet second one was a weapon third one is a weapon and a shield next is a chest and then the last one is boots now let's click clear and see if it erases those it did it it just put all those to negative one cool let's click on play let's pick up some items see if we can put a sword in our helmet slot it did not let us excellent let's try to put a sword in our offhand a sword in our main hand let's go pick up a shield let's try to put a shield in our offhand let's try to put the shield in our main hand let's take them both off put the shield in the main hand cool everything's working now we just need to add in some boots a chest and a helmet and this would be a good way to test how easy it is to add in items and if we need to think about making it easier or not because this is the first time we've added items in it wasn't just testing to make sure the code worked which I guess technically we still are but you know what I mean maybe so we'll create a new item just making an equipment item we'll call this one helmet make it a helmet don't need to give it an ID the ID auto sets itself when we put it in the database pick a helmet sprite uh, let's give it a buff sure agility between 20 and 10 yeah we can probably make something to make this cleaner looking eventually, but it's not hugely necessary at the moment. Let's create another item. We'll make this one a chest piece. Give it a buff also. We'll give this one three buffs. Why not? Agility, strength, and stamina. One, ten, one, ten, one, and ten. Now let's make some boots. give it one buff we'll give it a stamina buff between one and 100 oh yeah I think we forgot to set up sprites on some of these huh all right here's a boot sprite forgot to name this one too boots do we set up a chest sprite nope there's our chest piece excellent now let's put these on the ground actually let's make this cleaner too make a empty object and we're going to call it items and we're going to put all our items underneath this object make it a lot cleaner all right now let's duplicate this item and let's make a chest piece then we'll make a boot and we'll make what was the other one chest boots and a helmet yeah so helmet chest and boots and voila we're done that was pretty easy for creating new items oh nope we're not done we need to put it in the database still and we don't need the database in the resources folder anymore if you want to you can take it out I'm just gonna move mine back into the items folder so let's click on the database and lock it now let's select our boots our chest and the helmet I keep forgetting about the helmet add it to the bit database unlock your inspector and you'll see the ID is auto added to them now let's make sure we can pick them up and equip them. Oh, did we set? Yeah, we set the types. You can't put a helmet in the chest slot, but you can in the helmet slot. Chest can't go in boots. Chest go in chest. 
Excellent. We have all of this working, but you'll notice if you try to take your chest off and you put it over a bone, it'll put the bones in your chest slot, which we don't want that. So let's fix that. So back inside of your user interface class, we just pretty much need to do the opposite of this. So let's make two and symbols, and now let's make some parentheses and go inside of that parentheses. And the first thing we need to do is we need to check and see if there is actually an item that we're swapping it with, because if there's not an item, then it's fine. We can just go on. So we'll say mouse hover item dot item dot ID is less than or equal to negative one. If it is, no problem, keep going in our script. Now let's make two lines, which means or. So we're saying if this is true and this is true or this is true, we can go forward. The reason it's and this is true or this is true is because we have a parentheses around both of these statements. So either one of these can make this and a true statement. If we removed these parentheses, we would be saying if this is true and this is true, or if this is true, instead of what we need to do. I, that might be a little confusing, maybe re-listen to me saying it a couple times, but it, yeah, it's this, this is how we're doing it. So let's make two more sets of parentheses and go inside of there, and we're gonna say mouse hover slot, or mouse hover item, dot item, dot ID is greater than or equal to zero. So we're saying if it's less than or equal to one, no problem, keep going but or if it's greater than and equal to zero, and we need to make sure that we can place that item in its slot because what this is saying, if there's not an item, keep going. This is saying there is an item, so we need to check and make sure that the item that you're swapping it with can go in the slot that you originally grabbed the first item from, which is the reverse of this. So we'll say items displayed obj dot can place in slot get item object mouse hover item dot item dot id bracket parentheses. So we need one, two, three, four parentheses on the end of this. Now let's save this. Go back into our Unity editor and see if that works. That was a lot of coding and one single line. So we could have easily made an error. Let's pick up some items, make sure everything that we think should be working is still working. We can swap items in our inventory. We can take items off. We can put items on. Our item swapping is not working anymore inside of here. Or no, that shouldn't have worked because I was just trying to put a sword inside the main hand. So no, maybe it is working. Let me go find another sword type to pick up. Put a sword in here. Alright, cool. That still swaps fine. Everything still seems to be working as expected. And I actually think we verified that the code we just added was working when I think it was broken. If I try to take my sword off and replace it with bones... It worked. Weird. Try it with something else. Maybe bones just is uh because it's a zero. Yeah, that is what it is. Alright, so we have an error with if it's zero somewhere. Let's just make sure with the fish. Can we just drag and drop the okay, maybe something else is wrong with the bones. What is my bo oh my bones is set as a weapon that's why <laughs> that that would make sense let's make the bones a default okay so it looks like everything is working that was just a a user error not a programming error cool perfect the last thing that we're gonna do now that we have the equipment system set up perfectly the last thing for this video is if you remember I said I'd add in for the removing items if you're not over an inventory screen but if you do miss an inventory slot and you're still over the inventory screen it won't delete it so the way we're gonna do that is by going back into our scripts and it's pretty simple amount of code but we need to add one more thing to our item on mouse so let's go to our mouse item class and inside of here we'll say public user interface 
and we'll call it UI. Now we need to, we're pretty much going to use the same functionality for how the inventory slots work, but we're going to use different functions for it instead of the on enter and on exit that they're currently using. So let's go up to the start and after create slots, we're going to say add event, game object, event trigger type. The trigger type is a pointer enter. Now we can actually just copy and paste this. We, let's go to our static interface and copy the pointer enter, pointer exit. The only thing we're changing is the name of these. We're going to use an on enter interface and on exit interface. And instead of passing in OBJ, we're going to pass in this game object that the interface script is attached to. Now we need to create these functions. So let's just go down to here and I'm just going to copy and paste on exit and we'll paste it twice. Name one of them interface, put interface on the end of both of them and rename one of the exits to enter. Now erase what's inside of them. You can write it, type these out however you want, but this is the way I chose to type them out. Now the only thing we need to do is set up and deset up the UI that's on our player's item mouse. So we'll say player dot mouse item dot UI is equal to obj dot get component user interface. And then when we exit, we just need to set it to null. Now go back to your on drag in function. We're just going to make one more if statement and this if statement is going to say if item on mouse dot UI is not equal to null, then we can do all of this code else we can remove the item. We can also get rid of these brackets on this if statement to make it look a little cleaner. Let's go back into our project and see if that works. There's actually one more thing we need to do. We need to go to both of our canvases and add the event trigger. So add component, look for event trigger, and add one of these to both of your interfaces. Now let's click on play. We have errors, let's fix our errors. Ah, we need to replace this with game object also. Click play. And if you drag and drop an item on top of the interface, it's not deleting. And if you drag and drop it not on top of the interface, it deletes. Now, if you drag and drop it to the other interface, but not on a slot, it also won't delete. And if you drag it on the slot, it'll move them over. Cool. And if you drop them on the wrong slots, it won't delete them either. This is almost like a real inventory system. Trying to think if there's anything else we need to do before the video ends. So if you saw what I just did right there, sometimes that error occurs and I spent some amount of time trying to figure out what was causing it, but it doesn't happen enough for me to figure it out. It's somewhere on this line, but watch if see we get this error and it's going to keep repeating it, I guess. But if we leave out of the game, reopen the game, and let's pick up a chess piece. I, I can't get it to repeat it constantly enough to figure out what's breaking it. It only happens. It seems to happen when I like put it halfway onto a slot, but I can't get it to consistently do it. So if anybody can figure out what's consistently causing that problem, I'll fix it. But at the moment, I have no clue what it is. And I didn't want to spend another two or three days just trying to fix this one problem that occurs sometimes before I got the video out. So if I do figure it out before anybody else lets me know what the problem is, because I'm sure someone watching is a lot smarter than I am or can see an obvious mistake that I made, um, just let me know. If not, I'll try to figure it out on my own and we'll fix it in the next video. But I believe that's everything for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment, maybe like the video, and if you really enjoyed it and you can't wait for the next video, consider subscribing to the channel. But until next time, have a wonderful day. And so you know, I think in the next video, we'll start adding in to when you equipped items. It'll actually add stat attributes from the items attributes to your character. I think that'll be a pretty fun video. The script I use is pretty interesting. I like it. Maybe somebody, maybe some of you won't and you'll think it's a very weird way of doing it, but we'll see when we get there. I enjoy reading comments that say my code is weird. But anyways, have a wonderful day and I hope I see you next time on Coding with Unity.